Hey Ratbags, it's another top five and today it is the best biome. Pretty wide sweeping statement that. We all like certain biomes to build, some to adventure, some to just get resources. But I started this one off because I just know that some of you guys really love certain areas. As always, look out for Monday on the community tab where the next poll is going to be and have your say. Let's go, the top five best biomes in Grounded. Number five was the haze, which I included the dead grass zone, the trash and the back porch, and it only came in at 3%, probably because it is one of the toughest areas at the beginning to really explore. Not only have you got the haze, you've got some pretty dangerous creatures with the infected and the other zones, let's face it, who really wants to live in a trash heap? But both of these places have a unique amount of resources. We've got loads of cracks and gullies with all sorts of dead insects, but most importantly, your quartzite. One of the major reasons you might want to plug the haze so you can go and get all the quartzite. Of course, there is the fungal growth as well, but at the moment that's not as needed. The haze is a fantastic environment. It's got that claustrophobic feel with the green, yellowy smog everywhere and the corpses of fallen bugs. And even when you think you can rise above that smog and find somewhere a little bit safer, you'll often come across the infected. And of course, the haze does have one of the toughest laboratories in the game, for sure, because of the sheer amount of infected. OG players remember when there was nothing in here but just a few tased teas. So the trash zone may not be somewhere that you want to live on a daily basis, but certainly in terms of resources and getting all of that rotten food to help grow your stuff, there's no better place. Just remember to bring a gas mask or make sure you're pretty quick at chopping away at the rotten cores of apples, donuts and more. The main reason you will be visiting this area, of course, is the Black Ant Laboratory. Probably one of the toughest ones initially, learning exactly which direction to go and unlocking all the doorways to finally take on the assistant manager. But yeah, I think it's probably just about right as being the worst place to live. Let me know though, have you built a trash paradise? Is there a castle above the bins? Best place to build if you do want a home close to here, inside the hose pipe. Clear out the grass, you'll have a nice flat space and it's protected on all sides to stop any bugs raiding you. So I don't think many people are going to choose either the haze or the trash zone as one of their favourites, but I did include the back porch as well because I do figure that some of you guys may have built a base on top of the paint can or close to it, or maybe you walled off some of the sections underneath to have one of the strongest defence points in case the bugs raid you. There's some little spots that have a huge amount of mushrooms as long as you're prepared to deal with some wolf spiders. The Haze, a great place filled with atmosphere and environmental challenges, but not somewhere that you want to make a home permanently. Number four, with 10%, the picnic table, sandbox and slab path. Starting with the sandbox, I love this environment. It's so challenging making sure you've got enough to not get burned to a crisp. Of course, the ant lines give that added danger effect plus the little wolf spider that lives under the blue box. Despite it being pretty inhospitable, I would love to build an actual full base or convert the sandcastle into something actually livable in. I guess a bit like the haze though, that's why it's been ranked so low, just because it's not that useful for living in. It takes forever to get resources here if you do want to build, and so that's probably giving it some low points. There are some spots, of course, where you'll be here to cool down. And of course, the main reason you're here is to get some of the food resources like salt and spicy cha-chas. But given that I put it together with the picnic table, I'm surprised it's not higher. I thought everyone loved the picnic table, converting the D&D &D board into an actual proper castle, or maybe even living underneath it, which is surprisingly underrated. You get deposits of salt and, of course, easy access to loads of bee fur, as long as you can kill them. These characters and figurines, often mistaken for just something from a D&D &D game in the 80s, looks like it might actually be in the game as a creature as 1.0 looms. I remember the good old days before there was a bomb and a rake to knock down and get an easy way up. You'd have to actually build huge stairways to try and get up here. As I said, the rest of the area underneath it between the sandbox is really underrated. You get quite a few weed stems, in fact it's a huge collection, not to mention the mushroom grove you can find underneath the sandbox. Again, maybe because it's just a bit too far from other places like the hedge where you're going to need lots of berry leather, or even the oak tree and lots and lots of grubs and of course oak pieces. But this particular rise is a great location to build a base, or anywhere underneath the table in fact. 
and maybe a little bit too close to the mosquitoes, but there's certainly still some good merits to building something alongside these slabs, as long as no one actually becomes big and steps on you as they walk across the backyard. I think in future this location particularly might become more useful as we start venturing up into the upper yard in future. A lot of you guys I think really love the starting zone as 14% of you voted for the grasslands and the wetlands in third place. There are some cool little spots for sure, whether or not it's the rock pile in the middle and obviously you've got a huge amount of access to basic resources like grass, dead grass and more. The biggest variety of creatures from bombardier beetles to stink bugs, spiders and of course larvae and much more. And only the very brave would have built a base on top of the plank and deal with baby spiderlings on a daily basis. Or maybe you're someone that can tolerate the mites and you've built something alongside the fallen oak. But it is the baseball that's probably the most iconic where so many of us will end up building our first little camp, high enough just to keep away from certain dangers and just big enough to get our first little base going. The biome where it already begins for grounded. I thought long and hard about how to group some of these and I tried to do them based on where they are next to each other or maybe giving a bit of a plus or a bonus. I am not a big fan of the wetlands, mosquitoes, just lots of water to go swimming across but of course it does have rash and if you've got a decent axe upgraded go ahead and clear the island and you've got a pretty spectacular base location. I think this has performed well in third place because I did include that hedge. So many of you guys tell me you like building your tree bases and of course it is home to the big laboratory and the broodmother. The oldest laboratory that we were able to explore, the hedge has been our first experience in taking on a bunch of tased teas and making sure we've got something to cushion our fall in case we drop off. It's changed a few times over the last two years and now it's still a formidable challenge, especially with the amount of robots in here and of course the Orb Weaver Junior. But will there be more spiders added? It seems like some black and red spider from the 1.0 trailer has a home under the hedge. We can only wait and see if this area becomes even harder. A huge jump from third place to second, 27% of you guys voted for the pond and the oak tree. Again, I could have done this a little bit different, maybe had 10 different options over a few days, and that might be something I do in the future for best base locations. But in terms of just atmosphere, the amount of bugs, the resources, everything combined, the pond is a fantastic place. We don't often have enough reason to go back though, and we're looking forward to what they do with the upper pond, hopefully get us using our diving gear once more. The pagoda has long been a favorite base build location for many, and it's for sure a challenge learning what kind of ingredients you'll need to make diving smoothies and get the right diving equipment to explore the underwater laboratories. And it probably doesn't happen as much as it used to, now you know exactly where the koi fish is going to be, but old Trudy here is still a bit of a surprise whenever she does get close enough to chomp on you. And then we've got the iconic oak tree, where we've had to go ever since day one to find out the story and progress through challenges from Burgle. We maybe not have to visit this place as much as we used to, since we can now access so much like the milk molar and others from just the regular field stations, but there's a lot of you that really just love building your bases here, even though it's pretty much one of the still most dangerous things going, with the wolf spiders constantly on patrol, as well as many orb weavers. So many of you have been impressed by you guys building massive tree bases all around this and eagerly telling me you can glitch through the top of the tree. But the oak tree is rich in resources, lots of ways to go and get some of the oak stuff. I've always wanted there to actually be some sort of oak building set, I thought that would be pretty cool. But there's plenty of other spots here as well, with the flower bed and the wooden post offering some of the best base location spots, still just high enough to avoid the jumping spiders. So I can absolutely see why it was number two. But at number one, with a huge amount, 46% of the nearly 3,000 votes, the upper yards, including the barbecue, shed deck, and the trench. We've got a bit of everything here. We've got certainly a challenge, more environmental factors to go up against in terms of the hot coals, how we get them, and of course that helps our progression in making mushroom bill pieces once we get enough to make our ovens. And then the trenches themselves, rich in certain food resources, quartzite, and more of the new bugs like the black ox beetle. 
Both these zones I would say are not places you'd want to build a base, certainly I have never seen anyone build a base in the barbecue zone. But a lot of you guys have been telling me you're good to go if you build somewhere close to where the axe is, giving you easy access to the termites as well as the upper deck area. I guess you guys really just like the environments, the challenges and the stuff that they can offer in terms of resources and certainly not just based on where's the best place to build because I don't think anyone's voting the barbecue grill, the trenches or the wood pile. And I don't think the deck is either doing it for people as well, although there are some interesting stuff going on like getting the lint and taking on some of the dust mites. So if you enjoy them challenges, the environments, it must be somewhere around here that you guys like building your bases. Close enough to them resources, but close enough that you can hop down to the pond and make your way across the oak tree with a zip line or two. And I actually vote this particular flower bed as one of the best places to build, particularly on the edge here on one of these slabs. That's where I've got my base. But I think for many of you guys, you're already in love with the new upper yard. It may not actually be fully finished and it could be subject to change massively, but it is looking fantastic and different enough from the grasslands. So there we go, your top five best biomes and grounded. Whether it's just fun to explore, the more challenging environments or somewhere great for base building. Let me know your favourite spots and as always give me some suggestions about the next top five in the comment section down below. And until next time Ratbags, I'll catch you later.